be greeted in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, we thank God for giving us this opportunity to come and share his word. I would like to greet our mother, Pastor Marilyn, in the name of Jesus Christ. I also greet the servants of God. Wherever you are, I greet in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to greet, to greet the church, the whole body of Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank God for granting us this opportunity to listen to his word. Let us pray and dedicate ourselves. We dedicate the message, the listening, in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. We give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. We thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God, that you are here in your presence. We pray, my Father and my God, that you anoint your word, even as I dedicate myself to your throne of fire, as I yield to your spirit, take over, Father, the listening. We pray for the eyes of our understanding. My Father and my God, minister to each one of us by your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for the victory over the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, that through Christ Jesus we are victorious. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for blessing your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Once again, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for granting me this opportunity to come and minister his word. We are going straight to the word of God under the topic that says, God's representative. God's representative. Praise the living Jesus. I want to thank God for this topic. God is wonderful. God is good. I want us to know that in any given situation that we find ourselves in, it's either somebody obeyed God or disobeyed God. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. So as we go through this message, I want you to look at your life and try to locate the root cause of the situation that you find yourself in. If you go to the word of God from the Old Testament, you will see that those who managed to make it in life, there were those who obeyed God. And also those who did not obey God, they got into trouble. I'm saying this so that we may understand the situation that we might find ourselves in. We can look at our lives, but I'm here to assure somebody to say even if you have obeyed God, even you might be going through what you are going through. Sometimes it happens that in obedience to God's word, you go through. But be assured that as long as the situation you are in, you obeyed God. Be assured that God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You just need to pass through. Joseph, the Bible says that he was arrested. When he was in prison, God was with him. Everything that he went through, the Bible will indicate that God was with him. So you might be here as long as you obeyed God. No matter where you are, no matter the situation that you might be experiencing, you are just passing through. Let us go and read the word of God. We'll read from the book of John chapter 14 verse 26. I'll read in NLT version. John chapter 14, verse 26, it reads as follows. But when the Father sent the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, you will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. We are also going to read 
from Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. It reads in NLT, See, I'm sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. Pay close attention to him and obey his instructions. Do not rebel against him, for he is my representative, and he will not forgive your rebellion. But if you are careful to obey him, following all my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, and I will oppose those who oppose you. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Father, that you breathe upon your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak to us, Lord, by your spirit and by your fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Where we have read, Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples. Remember, it was a time when he was going if you look at John chapter 16 from verse 1 to 12, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples. He was telling them to say, I have been with you all this time. But there is a time where I'll be taken away from you. But today I'm giving you a warning. I'm warning you today so that when these things, they happen to you, you must understand that I've told you. I've, I've already prepared you in advance. But he said, I'm not leaving you alone. I will send the advocate, the one who will help you. He is my representative. In other words, whatever he will say to you is not from his own. Whatever the message that he will relate to you is from me. Hallelujah. If we look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says that God used to speak through his servants, the prophets, when he was addressing our ancestors. You would send the prophets to talk to them. But in these last days, God, he has spoken to us through his son who is Jesus Christ and now Jesus Christ when he was addressing his disciples when he was saying do not grieve because I've said I'm going away it is good for you that I'm going away if I won't go the helper won't come let us remember that they were used to be with Jesus Christ Jesus says I'm not telling you this thing I did not tell you these things before because I was with you but I'm telling you now because I'm going away. So don't be surprised when these things happen to you. I did not tell you then because I was with you. But there is a time that will come where I'm not there. But the helper, the Holy Spirit will be with you and he will be in you. So what we have read in Exodus God was telling the children of Israel to say, I'm sending an angel who will go before you. He is my representative. Remember our topic. It says God's representative. So he told them that he is my representative. So listen to him. Do not rebel against him. God will always make sure that we are led as his children. During Jesus' time, the Bible says that God came here on earth to reconcile us to himself, but he came through Jesus Christ so that we may be reconciled back to him. And also as believers, we have been given that mandate to reconcile the whole world to Christ. The Bible says that God was in Christ. During the time of Jesus, God was in Christ. In other words, 
Jesus Christ is God himself. So that's why here he says, the advocate, you won't say things of his own, but you will say exactly what I've told him to say to you. So you must be able to listen to him. That's why in John 14, the Bible says, John 14 verse 12, he says, if you believe in me, you will do the things that I did or even greater things than the ones that I did. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus Christ, in our time, he has spread himself so that he can be in me, he can be in you for the ad advancement of his kingdom. So now, I want us to understand that as the children of God, we house God through his spirit, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. He says, God dwells in us through his spirit. So God is in, in all of us through his spirit. So you must understand as a child of God that wherever you are, you house God inside of you. So I want us to understand that even as we live in this life, we must obey God when he ministers to us through his spirit. Remember, the voice is not outside, it's inside. The Bible says that the sin of rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshipping idols. So I want to ask or to challenge all of us to say how many times have we rebelled against the Holy Spirit? You will say this, but you find ourselves doing that. You will say one, but you find ourselves doing two. How many times have we rebelled against the Holy Spirit? The Bible said that rebellion is sinful as witchcraft. So how many times have I bewitched myself by not listening to the Holy Spirit? I have already bewitched myself before witches come and bewitch me. By what? By disobeying the voice of God inside of me. We are living in, peril in perilous times. All of us, we can see that the times that we are living in, they are bad. So we cannot make it minus the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's already inside us. We just need to yield to him so that he may guide us, so that he may lead us. Jesus Christ was addressing his disciples. He says, they will kill you. And they're thinking they're doing a holy service for me. When you are sending the 70, he said, when you are arrested, don't worry what you will say. During that time, it won't be you who, is, who will be speaking, but it will be the Spirit of God who is inside of you. If you also look at the prophet Jeremiah, from that chapter 1, maybe we can go there. Let's read there. Jeremiah chapter 1. It was a time when God was calling Jeremiah, Jeremiah was saying, No, Lord, I'm young. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse from verse 6. In NLT, it says, Also, rain, Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I am too young. Yet Jeremiah is saying, No, Lord. Remember, God has said to him from verse 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Then he said, also, oh, Rain Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. In other words, Jeremiah 
was a mouthpiece of God. So he says, no, Lord, I cannot speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, do not say I am too young. For you must go wherever I sent you and say whatever I tell you. Hallelujah. So here is the instruction. You go wherever I sent you. And you must say whatever I command you to say. So in other words, he is a mouthpiece of God. You must be my mouthpiece. Don't say something that I have not told you. So that this is how God he has made us. He has made us in such a way that whatever we do, we do according to his instructions. Like I said, that the times that we are living in now, it needs us to yield to the Holy Spirit. We cannot make it. These are the days where you are alone at your private places. The pastor is not there. The evangelist is not there. The prophet is not there. The apostle is not there. The teachers of the word are not there. Thank God for the live streaming, for the technology. But there are times where you, you need to yield to the Holy Spirit. You need him. Remember, he is God's representative. Whatever he says, you hear what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling him. So you must receive it. But how many times have we ignored him? When God was telling the children of Israel, he said you must listen to him. Then I'll be an enemy to your enemies. But many of us, we are the enemies of God. We are the enemies of his spirit who is living inside of us because we do not listen to him. Or sometimes we even choose to ignore him. But I'm here to encourage somebody today. As Jeremiah was called by God, when God calls you, when God gives you an assignment or a task, he empowers you, he equips you so that you may be equal to the task. What you need to do is just to obey him. Because once you disobey him, you are out of the grace. There is no coverage. There is no protection. Yes, you will, you will pray and say, the Lord is my shepherd. But as long as you have disobeyed him, you are just saying, you are just saying it by words. Remember, the devil knows those who obey God and those who disobey God. That's why I said, once we rebel against God, against God through his spirit, you are out of the grace. You are standing on your own. But the God news is, it's not too late to each one of us. The main thing is to look at your life, is to look at my life and say, where have I disobeyed God? Where have I turned against God? God is always ready to welcome us back. Because the Holy Spirit hears the feelings. Remember, it's God himself. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by the way you live. Do not grieve him. So I must be careful on how I live. I must take care of this God who is inside of me. Remember, it's God himself. Maybe we must make it sink to say, you are housing God. Because if we say the Holy Spirit, we think, maybe it's this, just this spirit or it's oxygen. No, he is God himself. He dwells in us through his spirit. That's why he says your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we are housing God. So in whatever we do, wherever we go, we must understand that there is a God inside of us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is important to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because wherever you will go, you know that you are covered. Even if you go through the darkest valley, he is with you. Jesus says, I will not, I'm not leaving you as offense. 
if we look at the word of god paul and silas the bible says we know all of us that we have been given the great commission to preach god's word all of us is for all of us the bible says paul and silas they wanted to go and preach god's word preaching god's word is a good thing let's go there ex chapter 16 i want us to understand the dealings of the god that we serve ex chapter 16 i will read from verse 6 it reads as follows next paul and silas travel through the area of phrygia and galatia because the holy spirit had prevented them from pe- preaching the word in the province of asia at that time i hope someone is getting this i will repeat next paul and silas travel through the area of phrygia and galatia because the holy spirit yet prevented them from preaching the word in the province of asia at that time then coming to the borders of mesia they headed north for the province of bethnia but again the spirit of jesus did not allow them to go there so instead they went on through measure to the seaport of Troas that night paul had a vision a man from macedonia in northern greece was standing there pleading with him come over macedonia and help us so we decided to leave for macedonia at once and at once having concluded that god was calling us to preach the good news there hallelujah preaching the word of god is a good thing but here what we have just read the holy spirit prevented them from going there why if they decided to go they were going by themselves no coverage no help of the holy spirit so it's important for all of us to understand the holy spirit or to cultivate our relationship with the holy spirit sometimes whatever we want to do it may seem good but it must be good as well to the holy spirit if you read in that book of acts the bible says when they were still arguing about what to eat about the law they said it seemed the decision that you have taken it seemed good to us and the holy spirit so whatever decision that you take as a child of god it must be in line with what the spirit of god is saying hallelujah and i also want us to understand that when we speak of the holy spirit we must understand that there is a fruit of the spirit i'm not against praying in tongues but if someone is baptized by the spirit of god there is an evidence yes some of the evidence is speaking in another tongue in praying in tongues but there is this that i like the most the fruit of the spirit in galatians let's go there galatians chapter 5 verse 22 it reads in nlt but the holy spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives so if you say you have the holy spirit inside of you this is the kind of fruit that the holy spirit produces in our lives love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control there is no law 
against these things. But my question will be, how is your love life? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? Are you patient? Do you have kindness? Do you exercise goodness? Are you faithful in what you do? Do you have self-control? I was looking at all, all this and I saw where I need to improve. Remember this you have been given. You just need to develop them. They are already inside of you because they came through the Holy Spirit that has been given to you. But there is a role that me and you must play. We must develop them. How is your patience? Are you self-disciplined? Because there are times even in my life where I can say I find myself in this situation because I did not listen. I disobeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit or at first I agreed with him. I will do a certain thing on a Tuesday. But because of pressure, because of greedy, I will do it on a Monday. But remember, I had agreed with the Holy Spirit say, I'm going to do this on a Tuesday. What you agree here on earth is agreed in heaven. Because many of us, we have agreed with the Holy Spirit. But you find yourself changing the goalposts. You forget that you have made a vow or you have agreed with the Holy Spirit who is inside of you. But you find you change the goalpost now. Instead of you waiting, instead of me being patient, waiting for that time that I said I'll do such a thing, I'm telling you, many of the mistakes that I've done, I've changed the goalpost. I've disobeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will lead me. You will tell me, do this now. Or wait, you will do it at a certain day. But because of pressure, because of lack of patience, I find myself in trouble. Many of us, we are where we are today because we chose not to listen to the Holy Spirit. We did not practice self-control. We were not patient enough. I'm not saying this to condemn anyone. But I'm saying this to say as much as we say we are the children of God this fruit must be there in us how is our love towards the lost how is our love towards the work of God are we faithful in the commands of God are we listening to his voice through his spirit. But I'm here to say to all of us, let us take care of him who lives inside of us. It's my prayer that Lord help me to develop the fruit of the spirit that as a result of the Holy Spirit that has been poured inside of me. I don't want to be someone who pray in tongues and at the same time I find myself lacking discipline, craving the Holy Spirit inside of me because the Bible says that when we pray, when we pray in tongues we are edifying ourselves. But how come after edifying myself I find myself doing wrong things? The way I speak. The way I do things. Remember, when you speak, you are parading yourself. You are revealing who you are from the inside. Whatever I post, be it on Facebook, be it on my WhatsApp, be it wherever, I'm parading myself. I'm saying this is who I am. 
after talking in tongues, what I send? Is this the fruit of the Spirit? So I don't want to pray in tongues and find myself, after saying I've been edified by the Spirit of God, I find myself doing things that are contrary. Remember, we are Christ's ambassadors. And this gift of the Holy Spirit has, be, has been given to all of us. The moment we receive Jesus Christ, the moment we repent, the Bible says that is given to those who obey God. Jesus says, if you, you love me, you'll obey my command. Then I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Another advocate will help you. Yes, I don't agree that I, I, I agree that there are miracles that are happening. But the way Jesus Christ said it in that book of John 14, I think we still have a long way. There are great miracles that we are still supposed to see if we do things right. Because he said you will do greater even than the ones that I have done. So I'm also challenged as a servant of God to say, Lord, I want to do greater things than the ones that Jesus Christ did. But it, if I look at my life, I can see that there is, a, there is still a lot of work to be done. But anyway, it's not too late. That's why I'm saying to all of us, let us treasure the gift that God has given to us. He is God's representative. He doesn't say things out of his own. But it's God himself. Let us nurture this gift that has been given to us. Remember, you are housing God. That's why we've heard in the past weeks that the mountain of God's house will be exalted. Only if we yield to the Holy Spirit, let the whole world see love in the church. And who is the church? The church is me and you. We represent Christ. And at the same time, we have the Spirit of God inside of us. Let us be encouraged today and yield to the Holy Spirit. And let us also develop the fruit of the Spirit. Let us not grieve the Holy Spirit who has been given to us to serve as a guarantee that we are the children of God who will be redeemed on the day of the Lord. So let us take care of Him. Let us have a relationship with Him. Let us have time for Him. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask of anything and it will be given unto you. So let us abide in his word. Let us have that friendship with the spirit of God. God saw that we cannot make it on our own. Child of God, the times that we are in now, they are difficult. You don't just need to act anyhow. Yield to the Spirit of God. That's why he said, in the last days, I will pour my Spirit. He knew that it won't be easy for all of us. That's why each one of us, the Spirit has been given. Because I'm not there when you have to take some decisions that need you to take them now. I'm not close to you. Or I'm not reachable. But there is someone who is within your reach. Who is the Holy Spirit? We just need to heal to Him. But how will you hear Him when you don't have a relationship with Him? And how do I relate with Him? Through studying the Word. The Word is the sword of the Spirit. Let us be encouraged today. We are not alone. The Holy Spirit has been poured out for us. Especially the days that we are living in. We need him. We cannot do without. Some of the things they may seem good to do. 
But what is the Holy Spirit saying? Like what we have read. When Paul wanted to go and preach the word. But the Holy Spirit said, no, you are not going. You was going to be alone. They were going to be alone. Yes, they were thinking oh, we are doing a good thing. Yes, it's good to preach. But have you been equipped for that task? Also Moses, he made a blunder as well. He was told by God to say, speak to the rock so that the children of Israel will get water in their livestock. But he went and struck the rock. God did not say strike the rock. He said speak to the rock. And remember, any disobedience, any act of disobedience, there is a price to pay. So if I choose to disobey the Holy Spirit, there is a price to pay. You cannot go away with it. And in our case, it's me who suffers. The one we are chosen not to obey the Holy Spirit, I will suffer the consequences. It's for my disadvantage. And some of the things, some of the decisions that we take, man as obeying the Holy Spirit, they affect even the generations to come. That's why I said when we started, to say, where you find yourself in, what is the cause? The decisions that we take, they may not necessarily affect us only, but they also affect the generations to come. So that's why I are to listen to the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to yield to Him. It may not seem good, but it's for our benefit and for those around us and for the generations to come. Let us be encouraged today by God's word. Take care of God's representative who is inside of you. He is God himself who is living inside of you. So let us obey him. Let us listen to him. Once you agree with him, stand by that agreement. Don't change the goalposts because of pressure. But I want to encourage us to say, let us also exercise self-discipline. It's not easy. But we need self-discipline. Be it in our finances. Almost in all areas of our lives. You can have money, but if you are not disciplined enough, it will just fly away. Some of us were in death because of lack of discipline. But it's not too late. God is faithful. Let us yield to the Spirit of God. The Bible says that what the Spirit wants and what the flesh wants, it's contrary. The flesh will pull this side. The Spirit will pull this side. But we must do the will of God. And how do you do the will of God? We're encouraged on Sunday to say we must do. We must pray a prayer of saying, let your will be done. Your, the will of God is done when we listen to the Spirit of God who is living inside of us. The flesh will pull this way. So if you are not studying the word, if you don't have a relationship with God through his spirit, you will follow the leading of the flesh. That's why I'll pray in tongues. After praying in tongues, I find myself, the flesh will call, go and do this. I find myself sinning. I find myself doing wrong things. Why? Because I don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We thank God for the for the message let us pray father in the name of jesus in the blood of jesus christ i thank you lord for your word i pray my father and my god in the name of jesus christ help us as a children to yield to the holy spirit that you have been given to us in the name of jesus christ and in the blood of jesus christ i thank you my father and my god in the name of jesus christ and in the blood of Jesus. Help us, Father, to nurture this gift of the Holy Spirit that has been poured in us. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our helper. You are stand by, you are strengthener. 
when we are weak, we are strong because of you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.